It may sound dramatic, but professional darts would likely not be as big as it is today without the contributions of one man, Barry Hearn. During the World Match Play in 2001, it was announced that Hearn had accepted an invitation to become the chairman of the PDC. At the time, he was best known for working in football, boxing and most notably snooker where he helped the game to boom in the 80s, but he had already been working for the PDC for six years, securing TV deals both domestically with Sky in the UK and internationally. In an interview with Hearn shortly after he became chairman over 20 years ago, he stated that he believed darts could become a truly global sport, but that they had to take risks and that he should be assessed in 18 months time. This date was around January 2003, where the PDC and BDO would host their world championships. However, just a few months into Hearn's time as chairman, the effects on the world championships were already clear to see, as six of the BDO's top players, including 1996 world champion Steve Beaton, announced that they would be competing in the PDC event instead of the longer running BDO tournament in early 2002. The prize fund of the PDC event was also increased, making it the richest darts event in the world. The executive producer of the BBC's BDO darts coverage said that he was surprised by the players' decisions and that it damaged the BDO event as they had lost some very recognisable players. BDO chairman Ollie Croft had a slightly different reaction, stating that the six players probably wouldn't get past the first round at Lakeside. Croft said that the PDC had taken just six players, whereas the BDO system had another 25,000. Well, Croft is going to be a focus of today and for a bad decision that both he and the counties of the BDO made. In the time Hearn oversaw the PDC, he introduced the revolutionary PDC Pro Tour and Tour Card System, as well as the Challenge and Development Tours, which are great second tiers. Hearn's effects can most obviously be seen in the prize fund for the World Championship, which was £125,000 in 2001 and is now £2.5 million. Back in 2001, the winner got £33,000 compared to half a million today. When Hearn stepped down from his role in 2021, the BDO no longer existed. Many fans see the BDO's top player, Raymond Van Barneveld, switching to the PDC in 2006 being the moment that the gap between the organisations became very clear. Following this, the BDO gradually became an unwilling feeder or organisation to the PDC, with providing a platform for amateurs who, when they improved, moved to the PDC to turn professional. In its later years, its management was terrible, with the 2009 World Masters being run so badly that it led to the WVF to stop recognising BDO events, meaning that they were no longer the governing body for darts in Britain. By 2009, the gap was very clear. The PDC World Championship now took place at Ali Pali and had a prize fund of 724,000 compared to the BDO, which was 320k. Then, on the 20th of October 2009, a public letter was sent from Barry Hearn to the board of directors and members of the BDO. It started by claiming that the vast majority of positive changes in the sport had been brought upon by the PDC, who believed it was time for the organisations to come together for the good of the players. They showed the BDO's 2008 turnover of 758k and profit of 16.9k and then made an offer to buy ownership of the organisation for £1 million. To prove that they could easily pay this, they explained how the PDC had a turnover of over £9 million and a profit of around a million in 2008 with cash reserves of £3 million. They stated that if the offer was accepted, they would honour all existing contracts currently in force with sponsors, venues and broadcasters and invest a further £1 million in amateur darts to provide funds for the amateur game to develop the stars of tomorrow. The PDC wanted to complete a takeover in early 2010 and stated that they believed the term suited both BDO shareholders and grassroots organisations. They also stated that they felt the offer was generous given the BDO's low profits and assets. Hearn also stated that the offer would give the BDO professional management to run darts in a modern and effective manner. 
He stated that they looked forward to hearing back from the BDO. The PDC got a response on the following day, but the BDO founder Ollie Croft was far from happy. He stated that the BDO was not for sale and stated that Barry Hearn had gone on the record saying that he wanted to destroy the BDO. Croft also stated that the reason the BDO didn't make big profits is due to the fact that they injected the money back into the game. He called Hearn's offer a cheap publicity stunt that had nothing to do with unifying the sport but everything to do with his inflated ego and perceived self-importance. Croft also said that nobody in the public had seen the published accounts of the PDC and that they never had an AGM. He said that Hearn was focused on filling arenas with rowdy crowds and turning the great sport into a show on par with wrestling. He said that maybe Sky were getting frustrated with the repetitive PDC offering. At the time, reigning BDO world champion Ted Hankey agreed. He felt that Hearn was trying to put a price on tradition and that the PDC only existed due to the pinching of players from the BDO. He also called the PDC a one-man show with Phil Taylor dominating at the time. He called the offer a cheap stunt, saying that the £1 million would not do that much and that the BDO was the true home of darts. Following the rejection, Hearn questioned the authority of Croft to make the decision. All of the quotes and the response were from him, who was listed as the founder on the website. Hearn believed that the offer had to be taken to the shareholders, who were the counties, to have a vote. He said that they had a democratically elected board and a county structure that formed their shareholders but didn't go through the proper procedures to discuss the offer. He rubbished many of the claims made in the response letter and said that Ollie Croft has again proved himself to be out of touch with the modern game and incapable of taking darts forward at either a professional or amateur level. Bill Taylor was quoted as saying that he was quite glad they said no because he thought the PDC could spend £2 million on something else rather than giving it to the sour-faced crab apples. He said that the BDO committee was like a working men's club at the time rather than business people. Following the 2010 World Championships, it was reported that Croft was working on the possibility of a takeover. He said that he believed that there was no substance but that they were still working on it. This was due to the fact that he was being pressured by some of the counties. Eventually a vote was held at a meeting between 65 county delegates and the decision was to uphold the rejection, ending the saga. Almost 10 years after making the offer, Hearn stated that if the offer was accepted, it would have been a terrible waste of money and that he found it sad that the Lakeside World Championship was known as the World Professional Darts Championship. Whilst if the offer was accepted, the name of the BDO might have died, a joint organisation would have surely been run more professionally and resulted in a better pathway for amateur darts. Hearn even stated at the time that they likely would have retained the county and Super League system, which was the heart of the BDO's grassroots operation. 